I have been trading for over seven years. Between 2020 and 2022, I quit my job to pursue full-time trading. I passed four $100,000 challenges and became a funded trader and lived solely off my trading income without any other source of income for over two years. But to get there, it took a ton of time, money, and a frustration. And so in today's video, we're going to go over seven lessons that I have learned from trading for over seven years years. Number one, it is not about the strategy. It is all about the sample size. When I first started, I continuously strategy hopped, always thinking that over the hill, the grass was always greener, that there was always a strategy that I was missing. Maybe that was because I was losing some trades. Maybe it's because I came across a new influencer that looked to be really consistent. But I learned after a strategy hopping enough, it's not about the strategy. It's about having a large enough sample size. Trading really, in many regards, isn't any different to gambling, where gamblers professional gamblers understand that they have an edge and in order for their edge to play out they need a large enough sample size if you only take 10 trades your edge isn't going to be able to play out it's about measuring in 100 and ensuring that you are managing your risk so that you can let your edge play out i am convinced that i could go back to the very first strategy that i learned on baby pips all the way back in 2016 and it would be essentially just as profitable as the strategy that I spent $10,000 to learn. And it would all be possible just by developing a large enough sample size. Number two, if 90% of traders fail, it also means that 90% of influencers fail. You can spend 10 minutes on Twitter and everybody, every trader looks to be massively successful. They look to be millionaires. The same thing on YouTube, the same thing on Instagram. But I have come to learn that if 90% of traders fail, 90% of influencers are failing as well. And this means that as traders, we have to be incredibly diligent in who we trust, and even more importantly, who we give our money to. Sure, there's nothing inherently wrong with the course. You'll exchange money to gain back your time to learn that much faster. But many influencers online are simply lying or they're providing totally unrealistic expectations. If somebody has a banner that says greatest trader in the world, greatest trader alive, well, that's incredibly misleading. So we need to be careful who we trust because I myself spent a ton of money on courses from influencers that really weren't that much better than I was. And again, this is coming from somebody who no, I don't want to be an influencer at all. I always say I'm like a four out of 10 trader. So if you don't agree with somebody says, if the vibe doesn't go well with you, just move on, ignore them. 90% of influencers fail. Number three, this one is a controversial one. There are gamblers and there are traders and you need to decide who you want to be. When I first started, I always thought I was just a few trades away from turning my $1,000 account into $100,000. But in order to do that, I needed to be a gambler and not a trader. There is a massive difference. And most people that we see on Twitter are actually gamblers. They are not traders. And so you need to determine, are you in it for the long term? Are you willing to risk less than 1% per trade? Well, then fantastic. You are a trader. But if you are looking to just bankroll your way to a payout, spend 10K on challenges to get 11K in payouts, well then, you're a gambler. It's important to determine which one you actually are. Number four, focus on the capital, not the return. If you wanna make a whole bunch of money, it's much easier to have a lot of capital rather than forcing yourself to make a huge return. 1% on a 200K account is a ton of money. To make the equivalent money on a $1,000 account, you need to make like 300% or 200% or whatever it is. Fortunately, it is now 2024. We are in the era of prop firms and getting funded. So fortunately, this is much easier than it was when I first started, but I still think that that's important to keep that framework in mind. Number five, if your eight-year-old cousin can copy your strategy, you are doing something right. I am a huge proponent and adamant on keeping trading simple. I personally am not a fan of the ICT mumbo jumbo. Again, if it works for you, I'm a four out of 10 trader. Don't listen to a thing that I'm saying. But for me, I have always found the best success when I keep things simple. Fibonacci, trend lines, psychological key levels, support resistance. My eight-year-old cousin can copy that. My eight-year-old cousin can do it. But if they can do it, I am confident that I am keeping things simple. I'm not getting caught up in the weeds. And long-term, that's going to be the best path for my success. Number six, this one was really hard for me to swallow and took a lot of time. But it is that working harder does not equal more money. I fortunately have gotten to the point where if I'm spending more than 30 minutes on the charts, I'm doing something wrong. But for years, I would do all my chart work and then I would just sit there and I would just look at the laptop and I would stress about the chart going up or down or sideways or whatever. I wasted so much time trading, uh, just staring at my phone, my laptop. It was so unnecessary. I would love to have that time back. Trading gives us so much freedom, but as traders, we often forget that. And because everything else in life 
you know, effort does equal output. Trading is not the same. The market doesn't care if you stare at your laptop, if you put in the work, if you don't. And so I think it's really valuable to remind ourselves that you might not actually need more backtesting. Maybe you just need to do the work, walk away and focus on something else. Number seven, lastly, a full circle, the full life cycle of a circle is that they realize that trading full time isn't actually the goal. So for me, the takeaway is lesson number seven, trading full time is not everything that it's made up to be. Trading is not actually the goal. It is just a stepping stone towards the goal. Trading offers us and provides us with an opportunity to go after bigger things. But because it offers so much free time, and also because trading is so inconsistent, you don't know when the next trade is coming. You don't know when the next payout is coming. Trading full-time is incredibly stressful. I did it for two years and it's not everything that I thought that it would be. And so number seven is to use trading as a tool to get to where you want to go. It is not the end result. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.